line at number 21 there. As far as the standings are concerned this evening, the Braves lead the Missouri Valley at 3-1. and one. That puts them percentage points ahead of Drake and Illinois State, who are tied at 4-2. and two. Wichita State, whom the Braves play on Monday, is at 3-2. and two. So is Creighton, Southern Illinois, Tulsa, and Indiana State. Round it out. Now the starting lineups for tonight's ball game and our public address announcer, Joe Mills. Center for tonight's Missouri Valley Conference basketball game between the Braves of Bradley and your University of Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And now let's meet the starters for tonight's ball game. First of all, for Bradley, a 6'8 senior from Nowata, Oklahoma, number 24, Donald Powell. For the Hurricane, a 6'5 freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, number 23, Michael Scott. For Bradley, a 6'7 senior from Havana, Illinois, number 40, Trevor Trippy. For the Hurricane, a 6'5 sophomore from Chicago, number 33, Wade Jenkins. And for the Braves, a 6'8 sophomore from Springfield, Illinois, number 53, Luke Jackson. For the Hurricane, a 6'8 junior from Atlanta, Georgia, number 50, Ray Wingard. And for the Braves, a 5'11 junior from Chicago, number 12, Anthony Manuel. For the Hurricane, a 6'3 sophomore from Indianapolis, number 34, Brian Lloyd. And for the Braves, a 6'3 senior from Chicago, number 33, Percy Hawkins. For the Hurricane, a 6'4 senior from Oklahoma City, number 35, Gracie Moore. And the coaches for tonight's ball game, Bart Bradley, Stan Albeck. For the Hurricane, J.D. Barnett. J.D. always looks happy, doesn't he? The Golden Hurricane haven't given him much reason to smile. They're 5 and 11. We'll be back with a tip-off in just one minute. for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12 ounce keg in your hand. 227 at a special time, Sunday at 5 on WEEK. With Lee Hall, Mark Strauss at the Tulsa Convention Center where the Braves are about to take on the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. The first meeting of the year between the two. And here are the officials tonight from left to right. J.C. Leimbach, Ron Burkholz, and Ron Olesia. And our statistician tonight is Tulsa's Gil Swalls. Tulsa coming off that victory over Illinois State Thursday. 51 to 31. Hersey Hawkins outscored the ISU Redbirds that night while he had 34 points against West Virginia. So don't be surprised if Tulsa gives Bradley the same kind of problems they gave ISU. Although Bradley did not get any food poisoning the last day or so. Here's Hersey Hawkins on the right wing, averaging 37 and a half points per game, and that's still tops in the nation. Trippy being guarded by Tracy Moore, Anthony Manuel with the dribble. Tulsa starting out in a straight man-to-man. -man. They'll switch off a lot on defense, try and confuse Bradley in the early going. Trippy misses the three. Hawkins there with the fall away. That won't go. Powell pushes it up and scores. So the Braves dominate on the boards, and that's something that the Hurricane can't afford since they don't score a lot of points. 
and don't shoot very well. They're shooting only 42% this year, and that's the worst of all Missouri Valley Conference teams. You hit the nail on the head, Mark. They've got to shoot well. They've got to rebound well because they don't normally shoot very well at all. A couple of mismatches to watch. Donald on Scott. Scott's 6'5". Donald's got the height advantage, but Michael Scott's a pretty quick player. And also Anthony Manuel on Brian Lloyd. Lloyd's got the height on Anthony there. Lloyd scored 13 points against Illinois State Thursday. He's number 34. And Hersey Hawkins apparently took an elbow in the face, so he'll get some minor medical attention here at the outset of the ball game. their usual lovely selves down here in Tulsa. We've got one fella behind us who, uh... <laughs> He's got a wide vocabulary, yes, doesn't he? Does. He? It's limited to four-letter words. Well, let's see. B-U-L-L. -L. That's more than four letters. That's four letters. Well, I, yeah. think, I think he's hyphenating. Oh, is that it? Compound word. This is Michael Scott, number 23, out to Brian Lloyd. Wade Jenkins, number 33, intercepted by Hawkins. He's double teamed, no foul call, but the Braves hang on to it. Hawk passes it off. Oh! Donald is stuffed on the play, but he's fouled as well. And call goes against the Hurricane. It's on Michael Scott, number 23. The first against him. Again, you see something that Hawk, uh, something he does that gets overlooked. Great anticipation on defense. He picked him clean. It looked like he got fouled out at midcourt, but uh, recovered. Kept Bradley going on the break. Powell with the free throw. Hits the first. Donald at the free throw line this year, hitting at 59%. He's started the last three games counting tonight. And as a starter, he has been much more productive for Bradley. Seven in a row on free throws. He was five for five the other night against West Virginia. The Hurricane has yet to score, and the Braves apply the pressure. This is Lloyd. Hawkins with the steal. They can make it 6 nothing, but then it's re-stolen by Lloyd. Out of bounds. It belongs. A little inadvertent trip there by Donald. Bradley wants to press them. They're going to press them all night because the ball handling in the front court for, or the back court rather for Tulsa is very questionable. Brian Lloyd not a good ball handler because he's so big. Braves with the ball and a 4-0 lead. A minute and a half into the ball game here in Tulsa. And it goes to Hawkins. Cutting, shooting, and missing. Tracy Moore on the rebound. And out come the Golden Hurricane looking to score for the first time in the ball game. Lloyd pops from three. No good. Howell on the rebound. And the Braves continue to dominate the boards. Anthony Manuel threw it away, and he's already matched the number of turnovers he had against West Virginia, which was just one. Out of bounds, off the hands of Hersey Hawkins, and Tulsa will retain possession with 17.57 to go in the first half. Anthony got too deep on that fast break. You normally want your point guard to stop about the free throw line to help set things up, and he went just a little bit too deep and ended up turning the ball over. Tracy Moore holds the ball at his hip to Michael Scott. Puts the dribble down, hands to Lloyd, guarded by Anthony Manuel. Now Moore, who averages near 21 points per game, bullets a pass to Scott. He's way off the mark, and the Braves come racing out of there with it. Anthony looking for Hawkins. He's covered. Trimpe open for the three inside to Donald. Would have counted had it fallen, but the foul is against number 33, Wade Jenkins, the 6'5", 185-pounder from Chicago's Carver High School. And Donald Royster will check in as we take a look at the foul. Good post up by Donald, using his body well inside. He's got about 20 folks here from Nawada, Oklahoma, about 50 miles from here, his hometown, and met his uh, high school coach before the game. So he wants to put on a good show tonight for the folks. Donald with four points already. All four of the Braves points in the game make it five, and the shutout continues. Just like at Carver Arena in Peoria, the fans here score until the Golden Hurricane scores. Or stand until they score, <laughs> and uh, they're still standing. The way these guys shoot, they might not sit down all night. Wingard to Moore. Now he circles at the three-point line. The pass around. 
around the horn to Donald Royster. Good Royster. defense by Bradley. And he finally breaks the crowd and cuts it to a 16 Bradley lead, and the Braves come racing right back the other way. Foul is on Michael Scott, or is it Brian Lloyd? It's against Tulsa. Lloyd raises his hand, and that's his first. J.D. Barnett getting a ground view. This is the first time in 10 years that he's coached a team that hasn't been above the 500 mark. Hawkins trying to back in on Lloyd, makes the bad pass, but the Braves recover. So the ball literally bounces their way here in the early going. Powell with a quick shot, but he's short. Michael Scott, number 23, on the board. That was a force that time by Donald. He'd like to have that one back. Scott open for the shot, doesn't take it, and then Trimpy, Trimpy comes out to meet it. That's where Tracy Moore likes to drive from. He's hampered by a bit of a sprained ankle. He hurt it in practice earlier this week, re-injured it again against ISU. He didn't practice yesterday. Ray Wingard misses the jumper. They kick it out to Hawkins. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Royster and lays it in. So the Hawks in the books for the first time tonight. And the Braves lead 8-2 to two with 16 minutes and 4 seconds to play in the first half at Tulsa. Great adjustment by Hawk that time. Wingard was not going to let him go to the hoop and jam it. This is Moore against Hawkins out to Ray Wingard. He spent three years in the Army before coming to Tulsa. He is seven years older than the youngest member of this team. He is a man among boys. And I'm guessing he feels right at home with J.D. Barnett. A little bit of a drill sergeant atmosphere. Yeah. Royster goes up in the crowd, rattles in and out, and the rebound is followed in. Wingard is there to clean up the garbage, and that cuts the Bradley lead to 8-4. Here's Manuel holding high against Michael Scott. A year ago, Scott was the player of the year in Arizona. Powell dances the sideline. The ball goes out of bounds and belongs to the Braves, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Bradley up by four. Office interiors by Whitmer can maximize the potential of your office for greater productivity. Whitmer provides a complete package featuring office function analysis, interior design, space and systems planning, and installation. Client needs are skillfully integrated with elements of design, color, and the finest in office furnishings. Whitmer also designs and installs filing and binding systems, including movable shelving and rotary and automated files. A productive office requires planning. Planning by Office Interiors by Whitmer in Peoria and Bloomington. When Ed moved to Wheaton, he thought he was going to have to look high and low for a country company's auto claim center. He didn't know that country companies has more of them than anyone else in the state. So how about it, Ed? Hard to find? Nope. It's just five minutes from my house. And the country company folks around here are just as friendly. You've got the country behind you. With the most auto claim centers. You've got the country company. For years, the people of Central Illinois have been telling you about Pekin New Car Dealers. We looked in Canton and Peoria and Pekin and finally decided to buy our car at Pekin. We negotiated uh, for the very best price. Isn't it time you found out for yourself? For the best selection, best service before and after the sale, and the best price, look no further than the Pekin New Car Dealers. They have what you're looking for, and they have it for less. Pro Wrestling this week, tonight at midnight on WEEK. Here's a look at Hersey Hawkins going one-on-one -on -one with Donald Royster. There was a time, Lee, when Donald Royster would not have avoided the foul. <laughs> well, this is still a physical team. We saw that in the game they played against Illinois State the other night. Later on tonight, the North Point Video Bradley Player of the Game will be named, and North Point Video will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley University's General Scholarship Fund. The Braves with the ball and an 8-4 lead with 15-17 to play here in Tulsa. By the way, in case you're wondering if the Braves have made any arrests since they've been here, they have not. <laughs> However, a Bradley fan apparently caught a shoplifter, one of the local uh, 
stores, so uh, Bradley is still doing its bit. It's a crime fighting bunch. That's right. Hawkins shoots off the inbound, and he's perfect. That's four for Hersey Hawkins. And a six-point Bradley lead. Now Hawk on the steal against Moore. They're up by eight. With Lloyd out of there, Tracy Moore's going to have to bring the ball up quite a bit. And that's going to hurt them offensively when he has to bring the ball up and then go into the offense. Scott with it, dumps it off in the corner to Donald Royster, number 31. It's probably difficult on your TVs at home to read the numbers on these new Tulsa uniforms. A block by Hawkins. He's making the plays on both ends. Manual front court. The Braves up by eight. Hawkins with the rebound. They call jump ball. It'll belong to Tulsa on the alternating possessions. The Golden Hurricane with a new set of unis, and this year the numbers are in gold instead of blue, so it makes it very tough to read them at home. We'll probably call names a little bit more than we normally would tonight just to supplement that for you. A 12-4 Bradley lead with 14-15 to play in the first half. Royster holds it high out of his range. Number 11, Rod Parker, checked in after the timeout. He gives to Moore, who hits. Tracy Moore, who scored 20 points or better 11 times already this year, connects on the jumper. Moore's just about their only outside threat and really their only scorer. They just don't have anybody. A walking call against the Braves. And the ball goes over to Tulsa with a six-point Bradley lead. Good crowd on hand here tonight. Certainly a noisy one. <laughs> of course, the guy behind me is a crowd by himself. He needs a megaphone. Be good for crowd control. Wingard inside. He did he walked. walk? He did. Ron Olesiak right there to make the call. And Big Mo, as they call him, Ray Wingard, has to give it up to the Braves. Parker with the hand check. Manuel tries to cut it off. In a crowd, Hawkins has it stripped away by Parker. The ball loose on the floor, recovered by Jackson. Now they call him for walking, but he was pushed, and I don't think the official saw it. You can't walk when you don't have control of the ball. He really didn't have a handle on it when he called that. But that's the way Tulsa plays, and the Braves came in here knowing that. So you sort of have to expect those things. Here's Scott on the right wing, flips it baseline, and gets the return. Rod Parker dribbling against Manuel outside. Moore with a long rainbow off the side of the rim, no good. And the Braves have it as it was touched by a Golden Hurricane player on the way out. Inside to Powell for the turnaround. Donald's off the mark. Moore's there to clean the glass. Rod Parker pushes it up the floor in a hurry. He started the year as the point guard for the Golden Hurricane, but they really miss Byron Boudreaux. And they miss all those guys. The Riley brothers, David Moss, they lost a lot. This is definitely a rebuilding year for them here in Tulsa. Scott inside, lost control, but then regained and scored. And Tulsa has closed the gap to four with 12 and a half minutes to play in the first half here. Pass out of bounds. And now they debate who it belongs to, and apparently the Braves lose. Brian Lloyd back in. And he'll replace Tracy Moore. teams have turned it over four times so far, so the Braves are a bit sloppy. They are first among Missouri Valley teams in turnovers. They have the fewest, which is remarkable when you consider the way they play. Tulsa, on the other hand, having all kinds of problems in the turnover department. They trail by four. They can close to within one with a three-pointer here. Twelve minutes to play in the half. Wingard goes up, stripped away by Luke Jackson. And Manuel will try to get something started with a long jumper that's no good from three-point range. The Braves look sharp early, but they have not scored in a while. Yeah, they're 12-4, now it's 12-8. And a lot of time's gone by. 
Must be contagious. Illinois State had a tough shooting night here the other night. Bradley having a tough time here in the last couple of minutes. The smallest man on the floor with the hook shot underneath the basket. Rod Parker and Tulsa's within two. Well, Bradley's got to keep guys from penetrating, and they've got to help out a little bit more on defense. Donald goes inside and misses. They're doing a good job of boxing him out now early. He scored at will. Now they're denying the lane to him. Tulsa can tie it. 11 minutes to play in the half. Here's Royster. Now to Wingard who drives. Throws up a brick that drops. There again, the penetration. They've got to keep these guys from driving to the basket. They've got to deny the pass inside. They've got to keep the guys from driving to the bucket because they're a terrible outside shooting team. That's where they want them to shoot from. Griffey misses the three-pointer. Here comes Royster. Three on one to Parker. Back to Royster. Reverse layup. No good. Parker rebounds. so funny right after breakfast I remember I started sweating I had some pains in my chest I thought it was just indigestion and got up to get an antacid but my wife knew about Methodist first hour emergency heart care and we didn't wait I was having a heart attack only I just didn't know it learn the early warning signs and don't give these signals a second thought act immediately Methodist first hour emergency heart care life-saving Listen to what farmers are saying about the performance they get with eradicane. Roger, the main reason I switched to eradicane is that I wanted a broad-spectrum weed herbicide. Right. Boy, it really worked good, uh, especially with this dry year we had this last year. I cleaned up my pigeon grass, the field looked great. With eradicane, we have excellent grass control. Besides, we had $2 savings per acre over a lasso, and our corn looks just fantastic. For better grass control than dual or lasso, farmers like you are switching to eradicane. A record-breaking end to January. This Bradley basketball telecast is protected by broadcast rights granted by Bradley University and the Missouri Valley Conference. Any rebroadcast or other use without express written consent of WEEK Television and Bradley University is prohibited. While Tulsa has put together a 10-point run, Lee. And they're right where they need to be. It's funny to see Tulsa run up and down the floor like that. It's also funny to see the contact we've seen the last two times down the floor and not see any kind of a call whatsoever. The time before on the break, Trevor got leveled. He's trying to pick up a charge. They made no call. Part of the trouble, I think Bradley's letting these guys penetrate into the lane and get that short shot. They were playing tough defense there in the early few minutes and denying them inside and forcing them to shoot outside. J.D. Barnett opts to put some more height in the ball game. Freshman Alan Thompson, who's a seven-footer, number 52 is in. He's only played seven minutes all season. Royster throws up the bad shot. Hawkins on the rebound. The Braves trying to tie the game. We're inside 10 minutes to play in the half. Manuel with the three. Got it. Prior to that, Trevor Trippi had gone over three on three-pointers, and Manuel had missed one himself. That's something that Bradley coaches have talked to Trevor and Anthony about, shooting the ball more. Against Indiana State, Trevor only had about three shots. He only had two the other night against West Virginia, so we'll see him put the ball up a little more. Donald Powell is charged with the foul. And that's the first on him, and that's the first foul against Bradley. Tulsa has three team fouls thus far. Braves by a digit, but Tulsa has the ball. Here's Royster out high to Jeff Sadowski, who wasn't supposed to play tonight. He had a knee problem that he came up with against Illinois State on Thursday, but apparently he's well enough to get in for a few minutes here against the Braves. A taller lineup than at the beginning of the game. Moore 
with the ill-advised shot. Misses everything. Hawkins open momentarily, but he walked as Moore picked him up. And I think Hersey's allowed the officials to get to him. This is about the third time that he's argued. Earlier, he went up without the ball, so he is having a few problems here in the early going tonight. Has six points, however. Well, you so know, he, he hasn't got, been kept off the board. He got smacked in the face a little bit, too, and that will disorient you for just a little bit, too. Kind of other things, little things will get to you. Here's Royster with the right-hand push shot. And that puts the Golden Hurricane back on top. Four points for Royster. Now the Braves take it the other way. They're, where they're shooting only 37% so far. Paul Wilson, number 23 in the game for Bradley. Powell inside, double teamed, out of bounds, last touch by the Braves. It's amazing the contact they're letting Tulsa get away with on the inside. Although Royster did do a good job turning Donald to the baseline and denying him the lane, letting him go back inside. A lot of contact in there. Powell would love to have a big game at his home state tonight. His last trip here as a brave. Royster lays it in. Donald Royster averages seven points a game. He's got six already. A three-point lead for Tulsa with 8.17 to play on the half. From in there, Tulsa's going to shoot well. Recovered by the Braves. Manuel with the three, and he canned it. And that's a big basket because it ties the game, and maybe it'll take some of the starch out of Tulsa. I think there's some starch out of Donald Royster. He's tired. He's calling to come out. Lloyd holds it against Manuel. Off to Jeff Sadowski, number 24. And he's a junior from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Almost lost it. Still in trouble. Alan Thompson now, the big man, seven-footer. Works it around the horn to Tracy Moore, who drives, blows the slam dunk, almost tipped in by Thompson, but the Braves race out of there in a hurry with it. Stolen by Tracy Moore. Ahead to Sadowski. Oh, he Nobody's won. home. he did take is the lead. Another whistle and a foul on Alan Thompson, number 52, the redshirt freshman. Wade Jenkins and Michael Scott are going to come into the ball game at the next opportunity. Meanwhile, the foul called on Thompson and a timeout on the floor with 7.03 to play in the first half. And the Braves are having their problems down south. growers around here know counter gives you more more rootworm control more root mass more corn and counter in furrow gives you more protection where it's needed most counter consistently outperforms every other rootworm insecticide and you can't afford a performance gap so get more of what you use an insecticide for get counter at your local agri center dealer like a top-down neon driving, like a sugar ray express, like made in the shade, like making the grade, like the coat of the old wild west. I'm an American original, the first draft beer in a can, tap an ice cold puss with a friend of yours. Brewery fresh draft beer in bottles and cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12-ounce keg in your hand. Golden Girls at a special time tonight at 9.30. Bradley leading, or trailing rather, by two here in Tulsa. And watch Percy Hawkins visit to Tulsa. Get banged around a little bit. Well, Percy's trip south doesn't end here. He and the Braves will be at Wichita on Monday night and we'll televise on WDEK. The Braves and Wichita State Shockers starts at 7.30 right here on your Bradley station, WEEK TV. The Hawk with six points and a lot of frustration. He's had a little trouble holding on to the ball here in the last couple of minutes. 
scores on the inbound, count the basket, and a foul against the Golden Hurricane. Brian Lloyd, number 34, charged with the foul. And so that'll send Hersey to the free throw line where he is averaging 10 points per game. That doesn't hurt the old average. Trying to hit on the back end of the three-point play. He does not. And that's a rare sight, but the Braves recover. Dan Al loses it to Brian Lloyd. And with a game tied, Tulsa has it in the front court. Here's Scott, top of the circle. Some more beyond the three-point arc. Puts the dribble down, passes inside to Scott for the wide-open jumper. Wingard rebounds. And a foul called against Luke Jackson. Wingard got good position that time on Luke. They are rebounding well. Tulsa, that is. They won four of the five games, of their five games, when they've out-rebounded their opponents. They've got to rebound well with the way they shoot, although they've shot well so far. They shoot even poorer on the road, under 40%, but here at home, they're about at 45%. Here's Michael Scott, right wing, launches one. And it's tipped in by Wade Jenkins, number 33. Too many white shirts in the lane. A 22-20 lead for Bradley or for Tulsa. Bradley trying to tie it here. Hawkins open from the wing, won't go. Powell in a crowd, and he was fouled on the play. And you can take your pick as to who it's against. <laughs> J.C. Lambach will tell us who the official violation's against. It's against Michael Scott. And that's two on Scott. Lloyd also has a pair. Donald Royster checks back in for Tulsa, and Jerry Thomas making his first appearance of the game for the Braves will take a spot on the floor. Good pick that time by Luke to free up Hawk. And then just go to work inside. Yeah. A jungle of arms in there. Powell has been perfect in four free throw attempts. Now he'll try to salvage the second here. Braves down by two. Down by one with 5.52 to play in the first half. Here comes the pressure. Scott in trouble, bounces one to Lloyd. He didn't know where he was for a second. I yeah. thought he was going to pass it back across the timeline. Scott at the foul line. Air ball. on Jerry Thomas. So Royster will go to the free throw line. He's already surpassed his average. He has eight points. There, excuse me, there again, an absolutely pitiful shot by Scott, but Tulsa dominating on the boards early going. They're getting a lot of offensive rebounds. You might remember Royster in that game at Peoria a year ago, which the Braves won. Starting a near brawl when he kicked up his right leg and hit Paul Wilson in the back with it as Wilson ran a breakaway to the basket. Now Wingard scores. He's fouled, and the basket will count. Replaced by Jerry Thomas a moment ago. The foul is on Donald Powell. And it'll be Powell who leaves the ball game here with Wingard going to the free throw line. Tulsa's turned this into a half-court game. And they've got a little bit of an advantage with Royster, Wingard in there. Big muscular guys. Those big Tulsa guys have always given Bradley trouble, whether it's the Riley boys or these guys. Seven points for Wingard and a six-point Tulsa lead with 5.25 to play in the half. But don't forget the Braves can turn it on in a hurry. Here's Thomas with the fall away. No good. Paul Wilson hustles after it. The Braves with the ball. And a foul is called against the Golden Hurricane. Ron Ver 
officials come over and tell us that it's against Michael Scott. So he has three already. And let's see if we can find out how this one happened. Look at all those white jerseys. A lot of them. Hawkins with the free throw. Rattles in and out. Still in there, despite the three fouls, although Rod Parker is getting ready to check in. And now another whistle goes against the Braves. Ron Alisiak says the fouls against Jerry Thomas, and that's two on JT. Parker will take the place of Michael Scott for Tulsa. So the Braves lineup now looks like this. Manuel, Hawkins, Wilson, Thomas, and Luke Jackson. Powell's on the bench after two fouls. Royster almost walked, no call. Parker dribbles outside. We've got 4.45 to play in the half, and Tulsa leads 27-21. Parker cuts through the middle, is blocked by Wilson, who also recovers the loose ball. Good help that time by Paul. with eight points. No shot there. Wilson, long three-pointer is good. Maybe we'll see the Paul Wilson that scored six threes against Southern Illinois a year ago. He was hot that day, wasn't he? Sure was. I don't know. Hawk might be a little tentative now. They've called a couple of traveling calls on him. Looks like he wanted to drive that last time. You don't see Hawk get intimidated very often. Probably not at all. Pass stolen by Hawkins. That's two or three steals for the Hawk already tonight. And then Wilson turns it over. Jamal West, number 22, makes his first appearance of the game. Averaging four and a half points per game. And we've got a timeout on the floor with Tulsa leading 27 to 24. Right on me, Augie. Used cars, you'll find a great selection at University Ford, plus with our seven-day exchange program, bring it back if you're not completely satisfied. $96.95 will put you behind the wheel of this 85 Camaro Z28. The Havana merchants would like to congratulate Trevor Trimpey and the Bradley Braves. Here's to a successful 87-88 basketball season. Come visit our community, a nice place to live. Support Coats for Kids at Area St. Francis Outpatient Center. American Dreamers as he profiles two Canton businessmen who have found an answer to the problem of leaky basements. They move to an apartment. That's tonight on <laughs> News 25 at 6, which you already saw, and Nightside. And at halftime, Lee Hall will be chatting with the former general manager of the Chicago Bears. He is now the general manager of the NFL's New Orleans Saints, Jim Finks. The reason Jim Finks is here in Tulsa tonight is he was a star for the Tulsa football team in the 40s, and he is being honored by the Tulsa Athletic Hall of Fame. And I'm sure then he'll catch the next flight out to San Diego. I can't think of a better guy to have on the night before the Super Bowl. No kidding. I wonder what his pick will be. Tulsa leading 27-24 with 3.50 to play in the first half. Wingard turns it over. The Braves have the ball and a chance with a three-pointer to tie it up. And to tell you the truth, it looked like Tulsa had that one beat. Royster was cutting down this left sideline here. Manuel on the dribble, guarded by Jamal West, who's a freshman from here in Tulsa. But he didn't come here to play basketball. He's a football player, a wide receiver. And now a foul inside goes against the Golden Hurricane. And we will check out the call from Ron Burkholz, who comes racing over in front of our broadcast position to tell us that Donald Royster is guilty of a foul. That's his first. 
J.D. with some words for Ray Wingard as Jerry Thomas goes to the free throw line looking for his first points of the night. J.T. is a real homer. He averages 13 points per game at home, only five points per game on the road. Jamal West poked in the eye, but dribbles it up the floor anyway. Here's the pass to Lloyd. Tulsa up by three. Down to 320 to play in the half. West at the foul line, picked up by Manuel. Makes the move around Anthony, but a whistle before he drove the bucket, and it's on Anthony Manuel. A little bit better defense that time down low on the post. That's something the coaches wanted the team to do during that last time out, play tougher down there on the blocks. Tulsa still not in the bonus situation, so they'll just inbound. They will be in the bonus when the Braves foul again. Look at Luke pushing him off the block down there. Keeping Wingard from where he wants to be. Good job. Royster. Brick. Hawkins ahead to Luke. Foul is on Tulsa. And it's against Jamal West. And had he scored on that dunk, it would have counted. Now number 14, James West, comes in for Jamal West. They are not related. James is from Milwaukee, and Jamal is from here in Tulsa. Luke Jackson goes to the free throw line, and let's see why. Percy Hawkins, the point guard that time. JT and Luke leading the break. But they don't cash in. They continue to struggle at the free throw line. Bend your knees, Luke. Fifty to play in the half, and the Braves are down by three. Moore pounds the dribble against Manuel. Flips to James West. Now to Lloyd. Inside Wingard. The head fake, the hook, the miss, and Jerry Thomas collects the carom. Better defense by Luke the last two, three times down the floor. Braves down by three. Wilson tries to tie it. Hawkins with eight points inside the Luke, and he's fouled. Donald Royster second. And that'll send Luke back to the free throw line where he was 0 for 2 on that last trip, and this year is shooting a meager 30%. He's been shooting him a little bit better in practice. The last time he shot, I said bend the knees. That's what the coaches have been imploring him to do, and that seems to be helping in practice. While Jackson has struggled at the free throw line, he has been almost perfect from the field. In his last four games, he is 6 of 19 on field goal attempts, including a perfect 6 for 6 against Southern Illinois a week ago Thursday. Bounces are going Bradley's way again. They can tie it with a deuce here. Rebound out to James West, and he'll run it all the way himself. A near steal by Royster. 150 to play in the half. And the Tulsa lead is four. Hawkins. Jerry Thomas is charged with a foul, and that's three on JT. will make a rare appearance. He's disappeared since he started the first five games, but with JT in foul trouble and Donald Powell on the bench, Greg Jones will step in there, averaging four points and four rebounds a game. Donald Royster at the free throw line where he's missed his only attempt. And he can add to a four-point Tulsa lead. Thursday's win wasn't the prettiest over ISU, but it certainly did a lot for the mentality of this team. It would appear that way. Donald Royster is one of the Hurricanes who have really felt the pressure this year. He started the season as a starter. 
had to go to the bench because he was just pushing too much, trying to do too much for a struggling Tulsa team. Tulsa by a half dozen with a minute and a half to play. This Tulsa man-to-man -man defense has been pretty tough. Manuel on the schoolyard play bounces it off the leg of James West and the Braves will retain possession of the basketball. Here's Hawkins held in single digits here in the first half. Shakes and bakes on Lloyd out to Manuel for the three in and out. Rebound Wilson goes up in a crowd and hits. So four points lead again. Still too much time left for the Golden Hurricane to hold out for a last shot, but no doubt they'll take their time here. West glances at the clock as he takes the pass. 23 left on the shot clock. Here's Wingard holding it high out to Royster. 15 on the shot clock. Plenty on the game clock. Moore at the foul line. Stripped away by Manuel. Out of bounds. Last touch by Bradley. And that means that there won't be a 45 second shot clock for the rest of the half. They will hold for one shot, says J.D. Barnett, with 33 seconds to play. The shot clock says seven, and it should be off as Bradley grabbed the ball. Another thing, Bradley did not have possession. So the seven seconds will remain on the shot clock, and they'll have to get a shot off. Anthony knocked it away. Luke really didn't get a handle on it, so they're saying Bradley did not have possession. Four seconds left, blocked by Wilson. But that will give them a new 45. Wingard and the big man hits a three-pointer. Or was he standing on the line? They give him two. They give him two and a six-point lead. He hit one from way outside against Illinois State in the first half the other night. He's a good outside shooter. Seconds. Wilson launches one. I think it's a safe bet to say that we've seen the best half of basketball by the Tulsa Golden Hurricane this season because they walk off the floor against the Bradley Braves at halftime, leading 33 to 27. We'll be back in a moment. For a quick, inexpensive meal, you can have this or Shakey's Buffet. Cost about the same, but you get a little bit more at Shakey's. The salad bar loaded with garden fresh vegetables, a variety of Shakey's delicious pizza, golden fried chicken and deep fried potatoes, piping hot pasta, and more. Well, that's the long and the uh, short of it. Come to Shakey's in Peoria, East Peoria, and Bloomington. At North Point Video in Peoria and Morton, get the best in Sony entertainment. You'll find an excellent selection of video cameras and radios. North Point Video's competitive prices bring Sony Trinitron Color TV performance within reach of any home entertainment budget. The latest in Sony video technology is at North Point Video, now at two locations. For large inventory, low prices, and professional service, North Point Video and Appliance at North Point Plaza in Peoria and 250 Detroit Avenue in Morton. Rick's TV in Pekin and NEC has something you must see. NEC Projection Television. We feel the absolute finest made. Big screen TV. Think NEC. Projection TV. See NEC. Giant screen TV. Think NEC. Thinking big screen TV? Rick's TV wants you to own the best, and NEC makes it. Oh, just one more thing. Rick's TV in Pekin services all big screen TVs they sell themselves. Compare that to other stores. 
When you want to know what's happening in your world, or what's happening in your home, meet us right here. We say. Sally Jesse Raphael and Donahue, weekday mornings on WEEK. This exclusive telecast is brought to you in part by Coors, the beer with the difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. By Coors Light, there's no slowing down with the silver bullet. By University Ford, where you're always a winner. By Counter, more performance, more consistency. Counter gives you more. By Methodist Medical Center of Illinois. By the Country Company's Insurance. You've got the country behind you. By ICI, makers of Eradicane and Diphenate. And by North Point Video, Audio and Appliance, Peoria and Morton. Bill, did you know that Diphenate Insecticide gave more dependable rootworm control than Puridan or Lorsban? No, sir. Next time, I'll go with Diphenate. Diphenate for stand-up control. Randy. Yeah? Did you know that Diphenate gave more dependable rootworm control than Puridan or Lorsban? Oh, yeah? I'm using Diphenate from now on. Diphenate for stand-up control. Jansen, because you want to win. This is the last one. Somebody better go out. I'm not going out. America Pages Plus. Published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop sitting down. Why whip something up in a pinch when you can pick something up in a pinch with the simple use of your fingers? America Pages Plus. Published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop good. The day you drive out with a new car, you start driving down the value month after month. With most auto insurance, total a car two years later, and you just get the used car value. But with Country Company's Keeper Policy, if your car is wrecked beyond repair, you get a brand new car. Same make and model, even if it costs more than you paid at first. So get the country behind you. I'm Bob Jamison. Get a jump on today's business with news direct from the offices of the Wall Street Journal. The Four Hours. The Four Hours. Weekday mornings at 545 on WEEK. With Lee Hall, this is Mark Strauss at Tulsa, where the Golden Hurricane leads Bradley at halftime, 33 to 27. And a reminder that the North Point Video Bradley player of the game will be named later in the game. North Point Video will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley's General Scholarship Fund. Right now, Bradley having all kinds of problems. They're really being manhandled by the Golden Hurricane. It's a really physical game, and Tulsa has played good man-to-man -man defense throughout the entire first half. Usually, Tulsa likes to switch things up a little bit and uh, go to a matchup zone, play a little zone, switch things around. They played good belly up man to man so far and they've rebounded well too. They've kept uh, on the offensive glass and uh, made this a half court game and that's to Tulsa's advantage. Yeah, so far Donald Royster with 10 points and David Wingard with 9. The Braves starting front line has only 8 points total. So as you can see it's been up front that the difference has been in this ball game. Right now, we're going to send you back to school for some words from the folks at Bradley. I came to Bradley because the size, it wasn't too big and it wasn't too small, and I could get the individualized attention that I need in my classes. And it also offered a good program in radio and TV production, which is my major. I'm big on Bradley because it has played such a major role in my life. Things have changed so much since I've been here. Totally unprepared am I to face the world of men. Timid and shy and scared am I. The theater has played a major role in my life here at Bradley. I've gotten a chance to work in two of the shows uh, for Colored Girls Only and The Sound of Music. Both of those experiences were great. Uh, I got to work with professional a professional director in for colored girls she was from chicago and i also got to work with professional opera singers uh in the sound of music 
and those experiences are just invaluable. University Ford is Peoria's used car headquarters. Plus, with our seven-day exchange program, bring it back if you're not completely satisfied. Drive home this loaded 87 Aerostar XLT for only $12,789. Design Furniture and Systems have created efficient offices for hundreds of Tri-County businesses. From interior design and space planning to product selection, coordination, and accent pieces to their experienced service department's final installation. No matter what your space or budget, Design Furniture and Systems can make your office more efficient through space saver systems like this mobile storage unit or color-coded filing systems. Design Furniture and Systems, Downstate's fastest growing interior design company with additional sales offices in Bloomington and LaSalle, Peru. From the day it opened its doors, Peoria's first and oldest bank has been a symbol of guidance and security. Through good times and bad times, the First National Bank of Peoria has continued to serve the people of our community, offering a wide range of financial opportunities. Welcome back to the Tulsa Convention Center. Tulsa leading the Bradley Braves 33-27. And the folks here at Tulsa honoring some Hall of Fame inductees. And one of them is a man you will remember, Jim Spinks, who spent uh, 10 years with the Bears and a year with the Cubs, and he's now with the New Orleans Saints. It's got to be a big thrill for you coming back, but you almost had a bigger one this year down in New Orleans. Well, that's true. This is a great thrill tonight, uh, coming back and receiving this honor and seeing so many uh, people that I've played with and uh, played against. And speaking of the, uh, the Saints, we had a tremendous year this year, uh, winning nine straight and ending up with a 12-3 and three record. We're very proud of it. You guys were kind of the surprise of the league, some would say. Uh, Jim Moore has done a good job with that team. Down Did a great there. job. I, I was surprised that we won 12 and only lost three. I really felt that we had the material and the uh, chemistry to be a playoff team. And I think uh, we're going to be a contending team for uh, the foreseeable future, at least. Yeah, do you ever see uh, Dave Wilson coming on and playing some uh, starting quarterback? I remember him from Illinois. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was a big fan of his back then. Well, Dave was our starter in 86. Uh, Bobby Hebert was our starter uh, this past year. But I got to tell you, Dave Wilson put on one of the greatest exhibitions I've seen this year. We were playing the Cincinnati Bengals there. Uh, and we, at the middle of the second quarter, we were down about 21 points. Bobby Bear was injured, and Dave went in and brought us back and won and won big. And uh, we feel very comfortable with Dave Wilson and Bobby Bear. Long time in Chicago, 10 years with the Bears, a year with the Cubs. Good memories of that? Oh, tremendous memories. It's uh, the start of our home. We have great friends there, and I enjoyed uh, every year of it. And uh, I think it's the greatest city in the world. I was going to say, Peoria, yeah. I guess. <laughs> thanks a lot. We appreciate that. A good uh, final year to go out with the Cubs you had up there. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. In 84, uh, uh, they won the division, and we lost uh, three in a row out to San Diego. But it was a great experience for me, a real learning experience. I'd spent most of my life in, in professional football, and to have the opportunity to work for the Cubs for a year and a half uh, was very rewarding. You're back home now, though, back in football and enjoying yourself. Yes, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's the same problems though whether it's in baseball or football uh, uh, there are certain things you have to resolve and uh, but I'm enjoying it yeah, are you on a plane now for San Diego no no we're gonna leave tomorrow morning go back home to New Orleans and uh, watch it and cover our television all right who's your pick See, I, don't, on the spot. I, I don't pick teams I, I think both teams deserve to be there uh, they're great organizations well coached teams and I don't care who wins it doesn't make a difference to me Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on your award, and good luck next year in New Orleans. Thank you. Thank you. 33-27, our halftime score. Bradley Trails Tulsa will be back in just a minute. Good evening, everyone. Coming up tonight on News 25 Nightside, Peoria Mayor Jim Maloof says another Northside shopping center will not come to town at the risk of losing downtown development. An Illinois farmer is freed from a Nicaraguan jail will probably be paying more sales tax than normal. An American Dreamer has found success in removing water from basements, and we had record high temperatures today. We'll have those stories and more at 10. We'll return to Tulsa in the start of the second half right after these messages. Rootworms are the biggest threat to your corn crop each year, and you need the consistent performance of counter. 
Last year, tests by major universities in the Corn Belt proved that Counter works best. It prevented economic loss to rootworms in 95% of all tests. The next insecticide prevented economic loss in only 73% of the tests. That's a serious performance gap. And you can't afford a rootworm performance gap. Get Counter at your local AgriCenter dealer. Why not try something revolutionary for lunch? Ground beef, lettuce, cheese, and a little imagination. Introducing the new Soft Taco Supreme from Taco Bell. With tomatoes and sour cream. Look, you can try something different or become another statistic. The new Soft Taco Supreme. Now get a Soft Taco Supreme for only 99 cents at Taco Bell. Brown Sporting Goods has hundreds of super fitness values to help you shape up and save. The Weslow Relay 880 treadmill has all the most wanted features, including variable speed adjustment, a 10-function work center that includes time, speed, distance, and a two-function pulse monitor, plus a gas-assisted incline adjustment, a complete system for only $499.88. You save $200. For fitness, it's Brown's. Brown Sporting Goods for the games you take. Hi, I'm Dean Grimm. Back in 1920, when Grimm TV and Appliance first opened their doors, my grandfather, father, and uncles began to build a reputation for Grimm, offering their customers fair prices backed by good service and customer satisfaction. That family philosophy has become a tradition at Grimm. For value, service, and the best in GE appliances, Grimm TV and Appliance will serve you better because we care. Morton, Peoria, and Bloomington. Support Coach for Kids at Area St. Francis Outpatient Center. The best thing that's happened to me since I've been at Bradley, I can't really say one thing. It's mainly been the relationship that I've had with my professors and the experiences I've had in my performing. To be on stage performing is kind of hard to say. It's just wonderful to know that you're giving a gift to so many people and hopefully so many people are enjoying what you're doing on stage. Years from now when I look back on my time at Bradley, I think the thing that's going to stick in my mind is the closeness I felt with other students and with my teachers, especially the teachers in the music department. Because here at Bradley there's a, such a one-to-one -one feeling and I think that the thing I'll remember is the relationship I had with those people and all the, the support that they gave me. With Lee Hall, Mark Strauss at the Convention Center in Tulsa where the Tulsa Golden Hurricane leads. 33-27 with one half to play. And here's the way it shapes up statistically. The Braves shooting only 35%. And they've missed seven free throws, so that's hurt them. They've only been out-rebounded by two. But take a look at the turnovers. The Braves have turned it over ten times. Percy Hawkins has been given credit for five of those turnovers. High scorers for the Braves. Hawk with eight. Donald Powell with seven. Anthony Manuel with six. And Paul Wilson with five. Three fouls for Jerry Thomas. As for Tulsa, they have Donald Royster leading the way with ten and a pair of fouls. Ray Wingard with nine. Rod Parker has four. Michael Scott has three fouls for Tulsa. And very quickly, a good friend of mine from Peoria, Bob Knight, who lives in Dallas, Texas, would like to say hi to the folks. Hi, folks. A Spalding alum. Yes, we even played Little League together. The Braves with Manuel Hawkins, Powell, Trimpey, and Luke Jackson. The same five that started the game. Braves down by six here at the start of the second half. Just back underway in Tulsa. Powell tries to make the move inside, and he's fouled on the play by Wade Jenkins, number 34, who's joined out there by Lloyd, Tracy Moore, Ray Wingard, and Michael Scott. Donald's got the height advantage on Jenkins. But also, Michael Scott has the height advantage on Anthony Manuel, and that is causing some trouble for Bradley. Powell with seven first half points, including six that came at the free throw line, and he drops another. 
what I was saying, Mark, Scott is so much taller than Anthony, and he's really causing problems. Anthony can't get the shot off when Scott is there right in his face. Eyes it, shoots it, hits it. So the Braves draw first blood, albeit at the foul line. They'll take it here in the second half. And they cut the lead to four. Wade Jenkins, double team, in trouble. Passes to Michael Scott outside the Moore, who's open for the three if he wants it. Guess he doesn't. Scott at the foul line. Michael Scott, here come the Braves. Hawkins through the layup. Powell was fouled on the rebound. No call. Donald was wearing a white jersey there, and there was somebody in it. Scott open again. Misses. Jenkins, offensive foul is called. Jenkins with a tip, but an offensive foul is called. Looked That's probably a makeup call. It looked like they missed a couple on that break. Hawk got knocked, knocked into the cheerleaders. Donald got fouled on the follow. And here's what the Braves had to do on the defensive end. And you see Jenkins there getting up over Trevor. All over Trevor. Luke Jackson. Count it. And it's against Michael Scott. Well, this is the way the Braves started the ball game. And then uh, everything started to slip away. That's four fouls on Michael Scott. Well, and they need some help inside. They've got to contend with the Tulsa big man. And when it's a half-court game, Bradley's going to have to dump it inside a little bit. Luke didn't take a shot in the first half from the field. James West into the ball game, replacing Scott, who sits down with four fouls. And Luke Jackson steps up to the free throw line where he's one for four. <laughs> Donald Royster also into the ball game. He takes Jenkins' place. Jenkins takes a seat with three fouls. If Bradley can force Tulsa to shoot the outside shot, which they will probably miss, and they can keep him off the offensive glass, they can turn this game around very quickly because they'll get into an up-tempo game, and that's exactly what Tulsa doesn't want. Oh, Hawkins with the banker. Powell with the rebound. He thought he was fouled. The Braves recover anyway. And just to make a correction, Jenkins has two fouls if he takes a seat. Hawk shoots off the pass, hits, count it. He's fouled on the play. And the Braves now within a digit. And Hersey Hawkins in double digits with 10 can tie the ball game with 18.37 left. The Hawk has been held to 29 points on three occasions this year. That has been his low output so far. Hits it. And we're tied. Let's see if this trap works. They've done a good job with it this year. They work past the pressure. Royster, not a good ball handler. To Wingard outside to James West. Turnaround by Wingard is good. They're making it look easy inside, Lee. They just took it and took a spin and hit it. Luke blows the layup, gets his own rebound, and is hammered from behind by Wingard. I guess if you're going to foul somebody, Luke's the man. Jeff Sadowski in, James West out, the taller lineup for the Golden Hurricane. As we also will see Fallon Wakese, number 40, making his first appearance in the ball game. He's only played a couple of minutes per game. JD's running a lot of these guys in and out. I think it's because they're getting worn out. I'm hoping that he'll have some fresh legs in there by the end of the game if Bradley starts running the ball up and down the floor. Well, except for the beginning of the ball game in the opening moments, the Braves really haven't gotten into the running game. No, Tulsa shot well and rebounded well. Luke really got knocked into the basket standard. Taking him a couple of minutes here to regroup. Jackson eyes it and hits it. Luke, two for two at the foul line. Maybe we should stop the game. <laughs> 37-36 in favor of Tulsa. I could have swore it was tied at 35. Sadowski 
Kaminsky inside. Ball out of bounds, and it belongs to Bradley. Yeah, I think you're right, Lee. I think the scoreboard is incorrect, and Marty Gillespie is noticing that right now. Here comes Dan Albeck over to the scorer's table, and he's going to double check. We got the confusion about the official score. It was tied at 35. Joe D'Alfonso talking with Stan Albeck. And Ron Alisiak comes over to the score to check the score. And we'll see if they can work this one out. But it was tied at 35 and Luke made two free throws. Apparently, they're giving credit for a three-point basket on the last Tulsa score on the scoreboard. Ron Alisiak said it was only a two-pointer. Maybe they can call H&R Block to work this one out. They haven't changed the scoreboard yet. Two-pointer plus a free throw, right, for Hawks? Scoreboard reads the same, 37 to 36. Hawkins, no good off the side of the rim. Gets his own rebound. He's averaging seven a game. Inside to Donald, nothing doing. He's up against Royster. Jackson from the foul line. He can hit that. He doesn't shoot it very often, but he can hit it. And the Braves lead by one. Or so the scoreboard says, Royster saves the pass. Inside to Moore, who banks it in off the glass. And Tracy Moore has four points. Only once has he not scored in double figures this year, and that was on Thursday against Illinois State. Manuel fakes the three, drives to Trimpey for the jumper. No good. Wingard with a rebound. minutes to play in the ball game. Tulsa by one. Moore turns and misses. Anthony pushes it up the floor in a hurry. Hawks behind him for the three. Nothing doing. And that time the Braves might have gotten away with a foul. The Wingard looked like he was hit pretty hard in the arm. Now they'll try to add to a one-point lead. Wade Jenkins, number 33, back in the ball game. The Royster around the horn to James West. Here's Royster with the power move. Donald Powell with the block shot. That'll put a new 45 on the shot clock. J.D. Barnett's team's always very deliberate. They've held the Braves to 38 points, and Bradley will get the ball on the bad pass and the turnover. And we've got a timeout. Tulsa leading by one on their home floor. It happened so funny. Right after breakfast, I remember I started sweating. I had some pains in my chest. I thought it was just indigestion and got up to get an antacid. But my wife knew about Methodist First Hour Emergency Heart Care, and we didn't wait. I was having a heart attack, only I just didn't know it. Learn the early warning signs, and don't give these signals a second thought. Act immediately. Methodist's First Hour Emergency Heart Care. Life-saving. Toyota Quality. It's a tradition that keeps growing stronger year after year. Number one in its class for customer satisfaction, the Toyota Tercel. The most trouble-free car sold in America. The Toyota Cressida. The best-selling 4x4 compact truck. Toyota. The number one compact truck sold in towing capacity and payload. Toyota. And they're all sold at a first-class dealership. Peoria Toyota Volvo. Who could ask for anything more? At Sherman's, we are proud of our total commitment policy. A total commitment to quality products, to the best sales staff, and of course a total commitment to always having the absolute lowest prices. At Sherman's, we beat all deals. No tricks, no games, no gimmicks. 
Just bring in our competitors' ads and prove it to yourself. At Sherman's, we appreciate each and every customer. So join the smart shoppers at Sherman's in Peoria, three blocks south of Sheridan Village, in Bloomington and Isaiah Plaza, and in Pearl across from the Pearl Mall. Commuter couples starting Wednesday on News 25 at 6. Just a reminder that tonight's episode of 227 can be seen tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And tonight's episode of The Golden Girls can be seen tonight immediately following our ball game, which Tulsa lead 39-38 with 15-21 to play. Jerry Thomas still on the bench with those three fouls, and the Braves go status quo with the lineup. Manuel, Hawkins, Jackson, Trimpey, and Powell in there. Braves with the ball, a chance to take the lead. Hawkins tries, but doesn't do it. Donald with the board. Manuel with the three. Too long. That cold shooting must be contagious. ISU shot 24%. Braves under 40% tonight. Foul on Anthony Manuel, says J.C. Leinbach. That's the first team foul against the Braves in the half. And the second on Anthony. So Tracy Moore will inbound in front of his own bench. Moore with only four points tonight. Averaging 20.8. He holds the ball high against... Percy Hawkins, Royster, inside, blocked by Powell, but they say Donald is charged with a violation there. That's three fouls on number 24. And we'll see if Albeck leaves him in the ball game. Pretty good move here by the big man. Right, he's done this a couple of times tonight. In traffic. Royce did two for three at the charity stripe tonight. Folks here in Tulsa will never forget the performance he had a year ago in the NCAA tournament when he scored 20 points and blocked four shots against the big team in this state, Oklahoma. He's in double figures with 11. Lots of time left, Tulsa by a bucket. Here's Trimpey, open for the three, doesn't take it. And takes the return to Hawkins. Lost the ball, but a foul is called against James West. That's the first on him. And the Braves will be in the bonus very shortly because Tulsa has six fouls against it in this half. Here's Brian Lloyd back in. Tracy Moore doing one of the better defensive jobs on Hawk that we've seen on that bad ankle. That's probably hurt his point production tonight, too. Hawk with the 11 points. And Anthony Manuel only had two assists in the first half. When the Hawk doesn't finish, Anthony doesn't get those assists. Here's Powell inside. Air ball. Looks like somebody got a piece of that one. Royster runs the wing. 13.45 to play. Here's Royster in traffic. Now West dribbles against Hawkins. Wingard top of the arc. Jeff Sadowski. Palms the ball, then flips to Lloyd. Ten seconds on the shot clock. West squares up from three. He's short. And the Braves will have it. No foul, but the Braves get the ball on the change of possession, and Stan Albeck likes those results. J.D. Barnett did not like that shot. The pass from Hawkins is tipped away and intercepted by the Golden Hurricane. Sadowski runs, pulls up, passes to Wingard, and they'll run their offense now with 13 minutes to play in the ball game, leading by two. Boy, and except for a few minutes of the first half, they've really controlled the tempo of this game. If the Braves would lose here tonight, that would mean three teams in the Valley would be 
have two losses. And Tulsa would be right back in it with only three losses. That's right. And tonight, Creighton beat Indiana State 75-71, so the Blue Jays are three and three. Tulsa with the rebound again. This has got to be the worst shooting night we've seen the Braves have all season. The Braves led at one time 12 to 4. Wingard blows the jam, but he was fouled by Luke Jackson, says Ron Alisiak, and that'll send Wingard to the foul line. The Braves led at 1.12 to 4, then ran off a string. Tulsa ran off a string of 10 straight points, and they've led ever since. We have had some ties in between. And I think the Braves had a brief one-point lead. But Tulsa's been in control all the way. Greg Jones back in. He made a brief appearance in the first half. And Donald Powell comes out of there with three fouls. Wingard with 11 points. And his only visit to the free throw line was to connect on the back end of a three-point play. He can increase the lead to six if he hits both. He's halfway there. Coming off one of his best games of the season when he scored 12 and collected six rebounds against the Redbirds Thursday. And he has Tulsa on top by six with just over 12 minutes to play. Stolen by Royster to Manuel. Off to Hawkins. Inside Jones. He's bumped by Royster, who fouled him. And that'll send Greg to the free throw line, where he has got 33%. Three fouls on Royster. I'm really impressed with Tulsa tonight. Their defensive intensity has really been outstanding. I saw him play earlier this year against Memphis State on TV, and they were downright lethargic. They were kind of half speed. They are all out tonight. When the Braves get the ball inside, if the Braves get the ball inside, there are two and three white jerseys on it in a hurry. Nothing doing. Looks like this might be the night the Braves less than adequate free throw shooting jumps up and bites them. Well, the field goal shooting hasn't been too impressive either. Inside the bullet to Moore. And Stan Albeck jumps up off the bench and says, boys, let's talk it over. With the arrival of the Morrison's new baby, the flexibility of Country Company's universal life insurance is a big help. I know it's hard to believe, but you can change the amount of your coverage, even skip payments if you need to. But why Country Companies? They've always delivered what they promised. You've got country behind you. With Country Companies Universal Life. You've got country company. What are farmers really saying about the way eradicane works in their fields? Well, we used dual before, and uh, it just didn't kill the grasses. So we decided to switch this year to eradicane for the first time, and it, it worked wonderful. What about you, Don? The performance was excellent, and I got a full spectrum weed control. I couldn't have been more happy with eradicane. For better grass control than dual or lasso, farmers like you are switching to eradicate. Road to the Super Bowl, Sunday morning at 11.30 on WEEK. Stan Albeck has about used up his patience and about worn out that little board. He's trying one more time to get the message across. Bradley trailing 46-38 with 11.33 to play. Plenty of time, but the Braves still haven't woken up from their slumber. They're hitting only 32% from the field. In the Valley tonight. Tulsa, again, not shooting that well, 44% from the field. But J.D. Barnett's team has played some good defense. 44% for them is actually 
pretty good. Well, and all of their shots have come from inside the blue, meaning the paint of the lane. They have not taken any shots from outside. One that I can remember that was way off from the three-point line. Bradley's got to play tougher defense inside. Yeah, if we had a graphic for points in the paint, that would show the real story of this game because in the first half, it was 26 to eight in favor of Tulsa. There are two in the paint for Greg Jones. The full court pressure being applied. Tulsa works past it with two seconds to spare, but throws the ball away. Now let's see if the Braves can turn it into points. Now, this might just about be the time we check out uh, Tulsa's guts and Bradley's. Paul Wilson in for Trevor Trimpe. Manuel, three-pointer, yes. <laughs> Anthony Manuel answering Stan Albeck's challenge during that last time out. Stan was giving him a hard time. Royster. Donald has suddenly become a fancy player tonight. James West called for the foul. Yeah, you talk about Royster, an impressive showing with the ball going to the hoop. Yeah, he's got 15 points and he's done a real good job of cutting through traffic, although every time he's done it, he's faked right and gone left. So by now, the Braves ought to figure that move out. They are three points down with Manuel at the free throw line. Well, when you get 220 pounds going in one, one direction, it's kind of hard to get him to go another way. Gets the roll and has 10 points. Percy Hawkins has 11. Bradley within three. Almost intercepted. Who touched it last? Oh, we have a foul called against Greg Jones. That's only the third against the Braves in the half. Bradley's already in the bonus situation. And Tracy Moore will inbound. Just a few feet down from that fella. Bradley's really going to push him now. They're putting pressure on all the time. And Moore is fouled by Anthony Manuel. We've seen more contact than that and no foul. Now that's... You go from not calling people getting pile-drived into the floor to calling a wave a foul. It's tough to play under those kind of conditions. And that's three against Anthony Manuel. 48-45 Tulsa, about 10 and a half minutes to play in the game. Bradley goes to Wichita State Monday night. We'll televise that one too. Wingard misses the five-footer, rolls it up and no good. And Greg Jones is there to clean the glass. Here's Manuel driving. He's fouled by West. And since the Braves are in the bonus, Anthony will go to the line. <laughs> That's three on West. So Scott has four. West has three. Lloyd has three for Tulsa. And for the Braves, Powell, Manuel, and Thomas have three apiece. Loose ball. Donald Royster rips it out of the arms of Hersey Hawkins. Ten minutes left. Those were two they needed. Wingard can hit from out there. We've seen him do we've seen him do it. More open, doesn't take it. Fifteen on the shot clock for Tulsa. Here's Wingard inside over Jackson. Fifteen for Wingard. And 15 for Royster. Bradley loves to double the ball, and nobody came out and came over and helped Luke that time. They're just letting Wingard take the lane. Somebody's got to come over and help out. Here's Jones. They thought he walked, no call. And he rolls it in off the glass. So Greg Jones is coming off the bench, and he gets the biggest hand from the fella he replaced, Donald Powell. 
Well, Greg missed a couple of games, did not play until the West Virginia game the other night, and then came in only after it was decided. So a lot of desire there. He wants to get in there and have a good showing. There he is on the glass. Wilson inside. Rebound Jackson. Hook is short. Jones fights for it and is fouled. Wingard with the foul. And Jones will go to the free throw line with 8.37 to play. That's two against Ray Wingard. Marty Gillespie offering a uh, little consolation to Paul Wilson there. He tried to avoid the contact a little bit too much, maybe. I guess big Ray Wingard missed the shot. Braves have to take advantage now of his taking a seat on the bench. Fallon Wilkesey in along with Michael Scott, so it's a much leaner lineup up front. They don't lose a lot of height, but they do lose a lot of muscle. Bradley by... Or Tulsa by two points for that free throw by Greg. Back tapped. Mercy Hawkins. It was touched by a Tulsa player, so the Braves don't get called for the over and back. Stripped away by Royster, who blocked Wilson on the way to the basket. We don't have a Tulsa player of the game, but you just saw who it would be if we picked one. Little doubt. Moore off to Scott. Pull up, pop is good. 52, 48 Tulsa with eight minutes to play. Hawk. Yes. Only 13 for him, but a big two right there. Braves, if they can come up with a defensive stop here, can tie the game. They're down by two. Wakazi, number 40, hands to Scott. Now they'll run their offense. Just taking their time, taking their time. Trying to work something down the middle. Inside, they have been more than moderately successful in the paint tonight. They've controlled the game underneath. Bocchese with a fake at the foul line. Nowhere to go. Ten seconds on the shot clock. And a whistle. It counts. I don't usually say very much about the officiating, but I thought I heard the whistle blow long before that shot went up. You want to see a definition of continuation in the NBA, you're going to see it right here. We won't, of course, hear the whistle, but we will see the play. All right, I'm guessing there's the there's foul. The foul. And they count it. And if he can hit on the back end, Royster will have given Tulsa a five-point lead. He does not. But there's a foul called a lane violation against Bradley, and Royster will get a second chance. I think he pointed at Greg Jones. And it would make sense that the Braves are a little bit over-anxious to get to a rebound. Even then, the horn should not blow on a missed free throw. We've got a timeout coming up, a TV timeout, and apparently the official scorer got a little bit confused. If he makes this... Which he does not, and we won't go to a timeout. And Ray Wingard won't get a chance to check in, so that works in the Braves' favor. They're down by four with 6.57 to play. Hawk is short on the jumper. A lot of hustle to retain possession, first by Jackson, then by Manuel. Manuel fakes the three. Tulsa's gone to their 1-2-2 two, two matchup zone Got that it. time. Paul Wilson pulls the trigger, and that was better than 19 feet 9 inches. It's a one-point game. Royster inside to Allen Thompson, who is fouled on the play. So 
So Thompson will go to the free throw line after the foul by Paul Wilson with 625 left in the ball game. Hulse has really done a good job of beating that press. Once they get it to midcourt, Bradley's outmanned. They've taken advantage of it. We'll mention again that Creighton has defeated Indiana State 75-71. Thompson hits the first. The Braves have been so close for so long and they just can't get over the hill. A miss. Fifty-five, fifty-three, Tulsa. This has been a struggle. Thompson being fronted by Luke Jackson. Out to West. Now to Royster. He has a high game of 17 going for him, Royster does. Mismatch down low, more on Anthony. Traveling called. And with six minutes left, both teams will take a break, and so will we. 55-53, Tulsa by two. Corn growers around here know counter gives you more. More rootworm control, more root mass, more corn. And counter in furrow gives you more protection where it's needed most. Counter consistently outperforms every other rootworm insecticide. And you can't afford a performance gap. So get more of what you use an insecticide for. Get Counter at your local AgriCenter dealer. Hi, this is Stan Allback, and this is my man for the best car deals in the Peoria area. Bruce Sowers at Valdi Ford and Valdi Lincoln Mercury. Thanks, Stan. We've got the best selection of new and used cars and trucks at the lowest prices right here at Valdi Ford and Valdi Lincoln Mercury. If you think about it, why would you want to go anywhere else? Come in and join the Valdi team today. Bradley and Valdi, the two hottest teams in central Illinois. And remember, if he can't beat your best deal, he'll give you the car free. Just tell him Stan sent you. Golden Girls at a special time tonight at 9.30. You too can get inside the huddle with Stan Albeck tomorrow morning at 11 on the Stan Albeck Show when he'll pick his top five choices for the best coaches in the NBA and discuss the central upset of Manuel, a Hersey Hawkins tribute and an interview. will also be presented on the Stan Albeck Show. Tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. on WEEK for the Stan Albeck Show. And what did Stan have to say? You spend your time out in the Huddle Lee Hall. Well, he's trying to work some things to try and get Hersey Hawkins open. Tulsa's done a good defensive job on him tonight, and they're trying to fine-tune a little bit on the turnout and try and get him open. Boy, they really need him to come on here in the final six minutes. As bad as this has been for Bradley, they're still within two with a chance to win on the road, and I don't care who you're playing. That's big. Hawkins has been held to 13 points. Anthony Manuel has 11. Royster high man of the game with 17. Inside six minutes to go, and the Braves down by two. A chance to tie. Can they do it? Hawkins with the ball. Fakes right, goes left. To Manuel, Braves lead. Had to have that. Big play by Anthony Manuel. On the three-pointer, Bradley has taken the lead. They work it past the pressure with a second to spare. More drives. Hawkins on the rebound. Ahead to Wilson. Lays it up. Good. The tempo's favoring Bradley right now. Stan Olbeck says back off. And a whistle. Olbeck wants a double dribble. We had another whistle blow. And the whistle that blew originally was because Tulsa called timeout. And apparently they called timeout before the double dribble that Stan saw, if there was one. That's what Ron Elisiak is explaining. Tulsa called timeout before the alleged violation. So we've got 5.04 to play in the ball game, and Bradley leads. And there's something we haven't had a chance to talk about for a while. We'll talk more about it when we come back. I'm Dean Grimm.
back in 1920 when Jim TV and Appliance first opened their doors, my grandfather, father, and uncles began to build a reputation for Grimm, offering their customers fair prices, backed by good service and customer satisfaction. That family philosophy has become a tradition at Grimm. For value, service, and the best in RCA electronics, Grimm TV and Appliance will serve you better because we care. Morton, Peoria, and Bloomington. What do farmers have to say about the performance they get with Eradicade? I was looking for a herbicide that uh, would do a better job than the lasso that I'd been trying before. I went to Eradicade, and I've had very little trouble. It works when it's wet, it works when it's dry. We've been having such inconsistent control with the lasso that my dealer recommended that we try Eradicade. And it was costing $2 an acre less, and we had excellent control. For better grass control than dual or lasso, farmers like you are switching to Eradicade. Road to the Super Bowl, Sunday morning at 11.30 on WEEK. 58-55, Bradley leads Tulsa with 5.04 to play in the ball game. I'm Mark Strauss along with Lee Hall at the Tulsa Convention Center where the Braves break their huddle. They have shot only 38% from the field. That is as of about a minute ago on the scoreboard clock. That doesn't count the last couple of free throw uh, field goal attempts. And the Braves send out Hawkins, Manuel, Greg Jones, Paul Wilson, and Luke Jackson. Stan Albeck feeling that Jones has done an adequate job underneath. He'll leave him in the ball game. Tulsa has the ball with Moore, Lloyd, Wingard, Royster, and Michael Scott, who dribbles up top of the circle. He's in trouble, gets it off to Wingard. You can kind of see the intensity's picked up a little bit defensively for Bradley. They want this. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Five seconds, Royster with the George McGinnis look-alike shot. It's short. It didn't even draw iron, and they give him a new 45. Apparently a brave player touched it on its way to the basket. Royster is stripped of the ball, but fouled on the play. The Braves apparently don't mind that call. It's on Greg Jones, so that's only two on him. And Royster, whose career high is 20, has 17 so far tonight. He's really snapped out of whatever kind of slump he's been in. They cut the Bradley lead to one. During the last time out, Stan Albeck preached patience, worked the ball a little bit. That's what they do. Luke with a 10-footer. He's hit a couple of nice long shots tonight. Michael Scott pulls up. Karam straight in the air, into the hands of Hawkins. He was hit from behind, no foul call. Fans thought he walked, and if he did, he got a little push. Good job that time by Luke. He didn't have real great position, but he got a hand on it, kept it alive. Here's Manuel to Hawkins. Launches it, yes. How many times have we seen it? Bradley needs a basket, and no matter how poor an evening he's had, he comes through with it. 15 points, and the Braves by five. Tulsa has trailed virtually the entire game. Royster is fouled on the play as he goes up, but another nice move on the drive to the basket by Donald Royster as James West checks into the ball game. Now J.D. called him back. Here he is. Royster went to his right this time. Avoids two. Foul is on Hawkins, his first of the game. 
Fans' contention is once you check in, you've got to go in. I guess he lost the argument. <laughs> he hasn't won any of them tonight, has he? Royster misses on his bid for a career high. He has 20, and he cuts the Bradley lead to four. 62 to 58, and three minutes to go. Here's Hawkins cutting through, cut off by Lloyd. Nothing open up in the passing lanes. Manual circles back to Wilson. Anthony's going to have to try and make something happen. Yeah, he's been cut off well tonight. He hasn't been able to penetrate like he likes to. Short. Rebound Lloyd. And he's fouled. Boy, that was a quick whistle. It's against Luke Jackson, and that's three on number 53. We're down to 240 left to play. Lloyd goes to the free throw line in a one and bonus. The Braves coming off a blowout against West Virginia by 31 points. Come here to Tulsa and get the usual rude treatment. This is the first time they've had to play a couple of games within this quick a time span. They had a week off after Indiana State, had a week off after Southern Illinois. Now they're in a string of 11 games in 23 ga days, so they better get used to it. 2.20 left. 62-58 Bradley. The pass booted to the sideline. Jones saves it. Good hustle. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Hawkins drives. Pull up, pop, no good. Royster with a rebound. Swatted out of bounds by Wilson. And it will belong to Tulsa as a result with 2.07 to go. Now the Braves are all over the floor. Boy, we haven't seen Hawk do that all night either. They've denied the lane to him. He hasn't been able to drive against Royster. belong to the Golden Hurricane. Down to 155 left, and you'll see the clock throughout the rest of the ball game. Both teams in the bonus. Moore steps Double around dribble. Hawkins. Double dribble. Nice call, coach. <laughs> no, not me. That's the coach. I just watched. That was uh, a play similar to the turnout that Bradley runs. Tracy Moore coming around a pick. That's probably where Tulsa picked it up from. A minute and a half left. Bradley's lead is four. Here's Hawkins driving baseline outside to Manuel. Launches one. No good. Rebound to Hawkins, who was fouled from behind by Wingard. And the Hawk who is shooting 88% of the free throw line. Almost a sure thing when he steps up there is just the guy the Braves want there now. Three fouls on Wingard. So he won't come out at this late juncture. J.D. Barnett opting to leave him in. Hawkins with just 15 points. This will be, unless we go to overtime and Hawkins lights it up, his low game of the year. And the Braves want a timeout. Make it Tulsa calling the timeout. In any event, we'll take one, two. 62-58, Bradley on top. When Ed moved to Wheaton, he thought he was going to have to look high and low for a country company's auto claim center. He didn't know that country companies has more of them than anyone else in the state. So how about it, Ed? Hard to find? Nope. It's just five minutes from my house. And the country company folks around here are just as friendly. You've got the country behind you. With the most auto claim centers. You've got the country companies. Like Larry, Moe, and Curly. Fast cars and fancy shoes. Like Buffalo Bob and a lucky dog. And like cats who sing the blues. I'm an American original. The first draft beer in a can tap an ice cold course with a friend of yours. Brewery fresh draft beer in bottles and cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12-ounce keg in your hand. 
A lot of folks from Peoria are here at the game tonight, but a group of about 40 or 50 people who are Bradley alumni made the trip up from Dallas. In fact, Stan Olbeck's daughter and son-in-law are here, and they're sitting behind the Bradley bench. So there is a lot of red and white here tonight as the Braves and Golden Hurricane break their huddle with a 123 left to go. 62-58. And for those who like these kind of things. There are 7,931 in attendance at the convention center here tonight. J.C. Leimbach waiting for a volunteer from the Tulsa Club to take that ball out of his hands and put the game back in motion. Hawkins will be at the free throw line with the Braves up by four. And as I mentioned before the timeout, He has 15. He's one for three at the charity stripe tonight. He's two for four. Exhausting night and a frustrating night for Hawk, but he comes through with two big ones there. The last time Hersey Hawkins has been held under 20 points was against Dayton last year. Reister on the bucket. Tulsa within four. About a minute to go. Bradley willing to give him that. They didn't foul. That was smart. Willing to give him the basket. Avoid the three-point play. The Braves will try to use the clock before putting a shot up. Wilson drives out to Manuel. Still 25 seconds on the shot clock. Jones lost the ball. A scramble for it. Out to Manuel. No foul call there on anybody. <laughs> He's tough to pick somebody. I think either team had a candidate. Here's Manuel to Wilson. Up he goes. Wingard on the rebound. And a foul is called. Hawkins foul is his second, but at this point in the game, that's of little consequence. Bradley by four, and Wingard gets sent to the line in the one and bonus. Twenty-eight seconds left. And Wingard will need to hit these in order to keep Tulsa in position to come from behind. He misses. Let's see who gets the rebound. It's still loose. Royster has it. They've got to get a shot off. There are 23 seconds left. Moore is short. Up it goes. It might have counted had it fallen. The foul's on the Braves. I don't think there's too much doubt that would have. And our Bradley North Point video player of the game, not the highest scorer, but a good clutch performance off the bench by Greg Jones, and I think he deserves it. Very much so. He came in and needed to give them, gave them a boost when they really needed it. Muscled up inside, made some good plays, got a couple of baskets, a couple of rebounds. Congratulations to Greg. Well, hopefully in 18 seconds, we can congratulate it. The Braves lead by four. seconds to play and a 64-60 Bradley lead as the Braves talk it over. Our next telecast of Bradley yeah, basketball will be Monday night when we chart the X's and O's with Stan Albeck again. The Braves will be at Wichita and our tele uh, telecast will begin at 7.30. So mark that down on your video calendar. And 
might join us for that. Wingard will be at the free throw line. He missed his free throw that led to the mad scramble for the ball a moment ago. Ten seconds clicked off the clock. And now he really does have to hit these for Tulsa to have any kind of chance to rally. And expect some pressure if he makes them by Tulsa. They may even call another timeout if he does. We'll wait and see. Braves get it in to Powell. He's fouled. Royster charged with a violation. And that'll send Donald to the free throw line where he has been rather busy tonight. He's seven for eight at the free throw line so far, which is well above his average. Donald was a real sharpshooter for the free throw line last season. And this year, he's had some trouble there, shooting under 60% coming into the ball game. But he's been good tonight, seven of eight. Seven of his nine points have come at the charity stripe, and he can salt it away. But if he doesn't, Tulsa has 15 seconds left, trailing by only two, and the Golden Hurricane want to discuss that. Back after this message. about to do something nobody's ever done before. Guarantee our products and theirs. And it all starts with a call to this number for all the facts about how we'll take your toughest soybean weed and grass problem, recommend a control program, probably using a little of both, and guarantee it'll work. No carryover, no stunning, or your respray chemicals free. What have you got to lose? Even the phone call's free. So call, because if you're looking for a catch, there isn't one. Golden Girls at a special time tonight at 9.30. Another 15 seconds of this. Tulsa trailing at home to Bradley, 64 to 62. And Donald Powell will step up to the free throw line, attempting the one and bonus. Some real important free throws here. Tulsa still not out of their huddle. And now here they come. A uh, little mind games. They send out Wingard, Michael Scott, Brian Lloyd, Donald Royster, and Tracy Moore. If he misses, Bradley is going to get back as quick as they can, and they've got to remember to defend against the three-point shot. Bradley coaches reminding them of all that final second stuff. Donald Powell in his last game in his home state trying to salt it away for Bradley. Hits the first. They're not out of the woods yet. Sixty-five, sixty-two, Bradley. It's up. It's no good. Hawkins on the rebound. Dribbles it outside to Manuel with 10 seconds. The Braves will try to work it away and draw a foul. Wilson is hammered on the play by Brian Lloyd, who is sincerely apologetic about it, but probably doesn't feel too badly. Six seconds left, and Wilson, I think, took a finger in the eye or in the face. Wilson. Let's see if he'll get two shots for a flagrant foul. He ought to. Well, he should, but they called one and one as soon as he was hit. There's no use having a rule if you don't use it. Now, if ever there was an intentional foul, that was it. 
the coaches would like in the last two minutes of a ball game for all fouls to be two shots. Tulsa calls timeout with six seconds left. It's a long shot for the Golden Hurricanes, but they still have one and will take timeout. with four men in double figures tonight. Hersey Hawkins has 17, Anthony Manuel 14, Donald Powell has 10, and so does Paul Wilson, but Wilson is going to the free throw line so he can add to his total. Meanwhile, Donald Royster has a career high 22 for Tulsa. And what did Stan Albeck say in that huddle, Lee? Do not give them a three point shot. The specter of Memphis State is still haunting these guys. They don't want that to happen again. They've got a D up on that three. Hopefully Paul Wilson will make both of these and the point will be moot. He misses. Four seconds. The three-pointer. Almost, but no cigar. And the Braves escape with a 65-62 victory over the Golden Hurricane. And while it wasn't pretty, it is a W. That is the slowest clock I've seen. Moore was halfway to the half court to the timeline, and then the clock started. They got an extra couple of seconds out of that easily. Bradley now is 4-1 in the Missouri Valley Conference, and they'll go to Wichita State in first place. Join us for our telecast Monday at 7.30. For Lee Hall, our statistician, Gil Swalls, our director, Tom Opperman, and our producer, Sue Dishman, this is Mark Strauss at the Convention Center in Tulsa, where the Braves have beaten the Golden Hurricane 65-62. So long, everybody. It happened so funny, right after breakfast. I remember I started sweating. I had some pains in my chest. I thought it was just indigestion and got up to get an antacid. But my wife knew about it.